We're going to talk about three players that could have bounced back years for the Chicago Bears and why it's important that these play, three players do. We're also going to dive into the mailbag as it's Friday, so it's your episode. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host here, Hayes. You guys can follow me right off the top at CEO Hayes. But more importantly, you can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform that we're on. Before we get into the mailbag, you guys know I always like to start off with a topic, call it a palate cleanser, whatever it is. You got to wipe away some of that those whack content creators you may have been listening to. But with that said, we're going to talk about three bounce back candidates for the Chicago Bears. We talked a lot about players who could not get contract extensions, things like that. But I want to talk about who can have the impact that if they do have a bounce back season, that would drastically help the Chicago Bears season. And first up is Jalen Johnson. If Jalen Johnson has a bounce back year, especially when you look at Tyreek Stevenson and Kyler Gordon being out there with him, it could do wonders for the Chicago Bears. And again, I'm not one of those people who look at Jalen Johnson and I I just say it's all about interceptions. I've always said man-to-man coverage is where I want to see Jalen Johnson improve the most at. And if Jalen Johnson improves in those areas, if he gets that man coverage down, he's gotten beat sometimes on man coverage. If If he allows less completions in that man coverage than what he's allowed, it's going to drastically help. Keep in mind, before the injuries, the Bears secondary was doing pretty damn good, even with you know Jalen Johnson not getting interceptions and things like that. If this secondary comes in fully healthy, can stay healthy for the most part of the season, it's unrealistic to ask that no injuries happen. But if they can stay relatively healthy throughout most part of the season, Jalen Johnson having a bounce back year can, can do wonders for the Chicago Bears. We already know and expect Tyreek Stevenson to come out with that dog mentality. But one thing is, he will be picked on early as he is a rookie, as all rookies are. Jalen Johnson and the opportunities that he has with his man is going to have to step up. Him and Kyler Gordon as well, Kyler playing in that slot. But overall, that cornerback trio that we have there, uh, because I'm not worried about Kendall Vidor, uh, with that, that, that cornerback trio that we have, it can be a very potent trio, but it all comes to how Jalen Johnson performs this season. I'm not even worried about contracts, nothing like that. I'm just strictly talking about if he has a bounce back year, and especially if you look at his last year being as his down year, it can do wonders, I think, for the Chicago Bears. Next up, Travis Gibson. We've talked about it uh, two years ago, having seven sacks in a season, not really impacting uh, as far as getting to the quarterback last season, but one of the most double team players in the league. I think now when you look at the improvement on that interior defensive line, having Walker out there with them as well on that uh, on the other defensive end projectedly, and just the depth that we have in that interior defensive line and the hunger that we're going to have there from players, Travis Gibson is set to have a big year. He, he, he I just think he is. I'm not going to, I'm not re- ready to say that, you know, for sure he's going to come back and, and have seven sacks or anything like that. But I think I look at Travis Gibson and I'm saying this, not only because it's a contract year, but because of the improvements. And the last time that we saw Travis Gibson with a solid defensive line, he did pretty damn good. And I think if Travis is able to get to the quarterback, even four, five times in the season, to pair that with Walker, the interior defensive line is going to help our secondary overall, right? The pass coverage and, the, and, the, and the, the pass rush, they go hand in hand in helping each other. Because I expect that secondary to be pretty damn solid this year on top of the improvements on that defensive line, I think that Travis Gibson is a, is, is a, a big candidate to have a bounce back year and to really do, to pay off for the Chicago Bears. Next up, it comes down to Chase Claypool, right? Uh, one of the biggest question marks that we have. I think, you know, Darnell Mooney has his own question marks, rightfully so. But I think people kind of look at it and expect now with DJ Moore as a true number one for Darnell Mooney to get back to kind of the things we saw when A-Rob was here, right? Chase Claypool, especially with the doubt, the question marks about his motor, things like that this season. And, you know, how he came into the Chicago Bears system last year, uh, Luke Getzey didn't do a good job in incorporating him. Darnell Mooney then went down. We had injuries, and he was kind of thrust into the number one wide receiver position. Didn't really do well. We weren't a good passing team last season. Chase Claypool having a bounce back year, as well as what we expect from DJ Moore and just looking at how DJ Moore, how great he's, he could potentially be with this team. The growth overall in that pass, um, in, the, in the pass part of the offense, I think overall Chase Claypool having a bounce back year could do wonders for the Chicago Bears. I really do think, and some would even say, hey, Hayes, it's not a bounce back year. It's actually just a good year. Some people would say that, but I think Chase Claypool having the type of season that he can have 
to do to could do wonders for the Bears. That's my personal opinion. You guys can let me know what you think on all that down below. But let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode. It's Friday, so it's mailbag day. It's your episode. We're going to go ahead and play the first voicemail now. This one is for Marcellus. What do you do now? It's the country boy from the A, Marcellus, checking in. Hey, man, I just want to tell all y'all guys, appreciate y'all for getting us through these dog days of summer. Like, I'm going to forgive y'all for missing a day last week, bro. But it, it's all good. Just, hey, I know. Ain't too much shit going on right now. Ain't too much to report. But goddamn, hey, I I did what you said, bro. I went to NBA Central, and I went to Chicago Bulls Central, and I subscribed just because I, I want y'all to know I really spoke with y'all, like, the long way. And y'all y'all motivated me to get my shit together, starting start to get my uh get my little platform off the ground. I mean, it's in its infancy stages, but I'm just letting y'all know that y'all, y'all, y'all inspiring people like this. So keep grinding. Do what y'all do. Chicago up. Bear down. Hold it down. Hey, first of all, thank you, Marcellus. We appreciate you guys. And like I say all the time, man, um, when we created this platform, we wanted it to be something for Chicago Bears. We wanted it to be something di- Chicago Bears fans. We wanted it to be something different. Uh, we wanted it to feel like chilling, talking Bears with your homies. And we really wanted it to be your platform as well. That's why we have the mailbags. We have a Discord as well that you guys can talk to us in. We're always in the comment section. We appreciate you guys wholeheartedly, and uh, you guys are, are what make the lifeblood of the show. And you know, we're going to continue to do what we can. We're going to continue to grow where we can as well. Um, and you know, we 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 love all the all the support we've been getting, especially over the off season. But we're not done improving improving yet. We understand how we can improve this as a platform. We understand how we can improve an individual host. We understand our growth spots, and we're going to try to you know, as the team grows, we're going to grow and improve as well. And we thank you guys for. You know, following us and supporting us along that journey. All right, let's get into this next one. This one's from Grego. Hey, what's up there? Hey, Kanye boys, Bobby and Steve Dub. It's your boy Grego calling. It's been a minute since I have actually left a voicemail. I just want to say, man, um, as always, man, y'all brothers just getting better and better at the whole thing, man. I love it. I don't want to call it a shtick, as they say, but it's just a y'all, y'all genuineness and uh, and, I, and I'm just amazed at y'all uh, insight and stuff like that. Y'all give it to us the way we want it, and we appreciate that. Just as a Chicago Bears fan, just saying that. But I want to talk about that defensive line. Listen, I'm telling you, we're going to be good. Now, I, I thought I read something about particularly, particularly the Bears may uh, go up to a, a player like uh, – Aaron Donald, if he becomes available at the trade deadline and things like that. And obviously, if, if we go at the player like that, if he's available, I mean, we push it toward not just the playoff. We got to be pushing towards the Super Bowl. So I think Aaron Donald is 32 or will be 32 this year. So ain't no need uh, to just recommend to get to the playoff because I truly believe that we're a playoff team already. I look at the Atlantic and NFC North, and I think that if all the Ducks fall the way we think they're going to fall, the way the players are coming in, being hungry and young, and Justin Fields obviously been the uh, catalyst for all that stuff, I, I think that we, we can at least get a wild card. That's definitely a tenable for this year. Next year, you know, who knows? You know, maybe a Super Bowl next year, but this year, I think we're at least a wild card team. I can't think of any teams, uh, what is it, like seven or eight teams that make the playoffs. I can't think of just seven or eight teams that much better than the Bears. Now, we're going to have to play every game uh, to win it, and, and I believe we can do that. I think the culture is going to uh, prove how valuable it is in getting these guys hungry. And I think I heard a take yesterday, but one of the uh, callers said uh, about that second string pushing the first string. That's the way it always is. What's that next man up mentality? So, and I'm going to say that, I think Trevor Gibson is going to surprise them both. And uh, as y'all like to say, Chicago up, bear down, homies. Peace. All right, great question here. The defensive line is going to be good. I think so, too. But you bring up the Aaron Donald rumors. Now, I'll tell you what. If the Bears make a trade for a player like Aaron Donald at by the trade deadline, that does signify a couple of things, right? Yeah, the Bears, you know, we're not going to say, at least not to me, I'm not going to say that right now. We're, we're even sniffing uh, uh, anywhere, even make it to the NFC Championship, right? We have to crawl before we walk. We got to start winning games. We got to then make it to the playoffs. We got to see the growth. Uh, playoff are, is a diff- different atmosphere completely. But when you look at Aaron Donald and what he's been, right, the fact of the matter is the man had 20 and a half sacks just three years ago, right? Uh, about five years ago. Damn, it's been that long. Um, 
And then, look, 12 sacks after that, 13 and a half, 12 and a half. And then last season, only playing 11 games, still having five sacks. Aaron Donald, even at his age of 32 years old, will represent a, a change in the defensive line culture. Automatically, the expectations around the defensive line change if the Bears are going to trade for a player like Aaron Donald. The biggest question is, what is it going to take? Would Ryan Poles give up those assets? We know it's all about value for Ryan Poles, right? And while Aaron Donald is an amazing player, do not get me wrong, and I would love to have him on that defensive line. You replace a player like Travis Gibson with Aaron Donald and having Walker on the other end of that, hey, man, you, you can do a lot there, right? But I think ultimately, I don't know if I see the Bears making and giving up the assets that would be needed. Now, one could say if the if Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney really show up big time, if that defensive line, especially the interior defensive line, shows up, if the cornerback, like if, if the offensive line really just is the, uh, the, the offensive line that we dreamed of, the Bears could be, you know, more willing to come off some of their assets. But what I've seen from Ryan Pohl so far, I really don't expect him to give up a ton of assets for Aaron Donald, um, especially with where the team is now. But, hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie. A, a trade for Aaron Dog Donald would signify a couple of things for the Bears and really change the expectations of that defense as a whole that I already have high expectations for. Now, as far as the, the Bears at least being a wild card, I would agree with that. I think that this is the season that we need to be at least in that wild card conversation. And some would say we need to be in the conversation of possibly winning the division, considering how open it is. But I do think absolutely that there are enough. There is enough to be said that we need to be competing for a wild card. And that that may be wild to say about a three and fourteen team, right? A, a team that's coming off a season like that. But I don't know. I just think the world of this team. And again, we need to see growth from our offense and defensive coordinators, just like we need to see from the players as well. So we'll see. Let me know, guys, down below. If you're listening, watching to this, what do you guys think about the Bears and the wild card position? Let me know what you guys think. All right, let's get into the next one. This one is from John Johnson. Hey, Bobby. Oh, it's your boy, John Johnson, representing South Carolina from the big city of Utah, Bill. I just want to let y'all guys know, like I always say, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Y'all keep us informed as Bears fans. I started tuning into your show couple months ago, man, and I was stuck with listening to other bear programs like uh I can't I can't remember the dude's name right now. Um uh Graham or something. I can't remember. But anyway, ever since I started listening to y'all show, man, I realized this show is whack. This show is whack. The reason why because I can sense y'all true bear fans, just like me. South Carolina, it ain't much, but we got some bear fans down here. And trust me, we loyal. I appreciate the show, guys. Keep doing what y'all doing. I ain't calling for the average fan mail just to just just just, just to call and talk about the Bears. I'm calling to tell y'all thank you. Keep doing what y'all doing, man. Bear down all the way from South Carolina. First off, appreciate the love once again. Um, Bears fans in South Carolina, that's crazy. I would not have expected there to be a lot of Bears fans in South Carolina. I just wouldn't have. But again, hey, as somebody who like grew up overseas myself and was a huge Bears fan, like I, Bears fans all over the country, right? I'm, I hesitate to say all over the world because American football isn't kind of the worldwide sport that like a like a um a basket like the NBA is or soccer and things like that. Football, uh, the other football. Uh, but you know, ultimately, yeah, Bears fans all over the country, and we're ga glad that you guys are here, man. And like I said, we have a Discord server as well. If you guys want to come in and talk to us, talk to other Bears fans more often, make sure you guys join that server. Um, like I said before, this is meant to be a platform. For Bears fans, Bears fans from all over the world to come and we could talk about our favorite thing. That's them Chicago Bears. All right, let's get into this next one. This one is from KD. Man, what's up, gang? It's your boy KD out the shot. Man, I'm a first time caller, but I'm a long time listener. And I just watched the video where they was talking about uh, CBS ranking Matt the worst coach in the NFL. And I agree that that was a extremely, extremely lazy take because they talked about how we had a, you know, Cut a lot of talent out the roster to do our rebuild, start our rebuild. But it's like, okay, how are you going to rank a first-time coach as the worst available with the least amount of talent? That was extremely lazy. I think a better take would have been uh, calling out one of these coaches that really their roster is loaded. I mean, they, you know, consistently middle of the pack or maybe was under 500 last year. I think that would have been a better take, me personally. Uh, another topic I wanted to get y'all perspective on and see how y'all feel about it. I know the O-line is improved, but how do y'all feel about the depth? Because, I mean, yeah, we got people that's not in starting roles that have been starters before, but I feel like, man, y'all know how them big boys get injured. 
I ain't going to lie. I ain't trying to be negative at all either. If we like an injury or two away from that starting online to being in a very similar position. So I just wanted to get y'all input on that or how y'all feel about the overall O-line depth too. Depth on the O-line. Now, I agree with your take on Matt Eberfuss. Not going to get into that too much. We're having a whole episode on our thoughts. I agree with you. I think a lot of people kind of see that article as what it is. It was harsh on a quarterback that was in his first, first year. But you bring up an interesting thing. The depth on that offensive line. Because like you said, an injury, how, are we able to weather an injury on that offensive line? So when you look at really the depth that we have there, J. Tyree Carter, who uh, reportedly in many camp OTAs has been used all over that offensive line. I think the Bears still see a lot out of him as well. Um, you look at Doug Kramer. Uh, the big questions around him, like the Bears held on to him last season because they didn't want to risk somebody poaching them off their practice squad. So I do think there's some talent there. And then I think really when you look at depth as well, you have to look at Alex Leatherwood. A player who in his rookie year when he was healthy showed a lot, right? Hasn't showed too much since he's been in a Bears uniform. But I do think that there's enough cause for, for reason and thinking when it comes to Alex Leatherwood that the Bears do hope that they're going to be able to use him at least as a depth piece. And I think he could be a quality one as well, but he has to be able to stay healthy. He has to keep his mental in the game as well. And so when you add that to Lucas Patrick, who, yeah, we know we had issues with Lucas Patrick staying healthy, but still as a depth piece, he could be pretty damn good. I like the depth that we have there, but to your point, if we have a major injury where we need somebody to start for three, four games and replace, we could be right back where we were last season. So we'll see. But I do think that we got some depth there, uh, and it's and it's solid depth. It's not the highest quality depth, but I think we got some damn good uh, depth there. And we also Dieter, I didn't mention him. Uh, Dush, uh, who? The, oh, that's a pause moment. Uh, who we brought in as well? Like, there's some depth there. I just. I guess we're going to have to see how that depth ends up performing and maybe, hopefully, not going wood, we don't even have to worry about it, right? But yeah, they're going to, the depth pieces are going to be used, whether they're rotational, they get a couple of snaps, whether they have to step in for injuries, somebody gets banged up. And let's hope that they can protect the quarterback and Justin Fields better than they did last season. All right, but all right, let's get into the last voicemail for today. This one is from Fred. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? This is your boy Fred, man. I say, man, who don't get a contract extension, I agree with you. That fucking Bill door. For sure, his ass don't get no contract extension. And I was watching the show Sunday, and I think uh, I agree with uh, C-Dub, man. Johnson ass going to be gone. That's why they drafted that boy Terrell Smith, because they see that boy Terrell Smith has better potential and talent better than Jalen Johnson. He probably can get you some picks. And he looks like he's a, in a shutdown corner. But we, I ain't going to say that just yet, though. But I don't think Mooney get a contract extension. I do uh, believe. Cole Komet get a contract extension and Seven Jenkins. Gibson, I don't know. It's like a, like a, I don't know about Selma. I'm not for sure unless he perform like you said. If he do perform, then he might get a contract extension. If not, then we can be moving on for him though. But for motherfuckers to say Matt Eflus the worst coach because he had one bad season, every head coach they first year may have that one bad season sometimes, or they come to a team that's already established, they may have a good season. So for them to say that, like, it's just ridiculous. Even it's ridiculous when they say, oh, Shane Edmonds is an overrated linebacker because he's on the Bears. I'm so tired of the media and everybody hating on us. I can't wait till the season starts so everybody can see, like, we that fucking team. Not just on paper, but we that team on that field, though, man. But I believe, you know, the guys I just uh, mentioned, I think them guys get a contract extension. I don't think – Mooney, Johnson, or Gibson, I don't think those guys get a contract extension with us, though. Because like you said, we got some picks, and we can probably use them picks to, you know, replace them or sign somebody in free agency after the, you know, the uh, next offseason as well, though, man. And I'm so tired of them goddamn Detroit Kittens, the goddamn Minnesota Vikings, and the Green, Green Gay Packers talking shit. I can't wait till we put our foot in all they ass this season coming up. Because – they just think they just run the shit. Kirk Cousins, trash. Jerry Goff, trash. Jordan Love, pure trash. But I'm going to leave it at that, man. Let me know, man, if you agree you know, with the guys I mentioned who going to get the contract extension. And it's always Chicago up and bear down. First off, Fred be going off, y'all. That's crazy. Uh, Ken of got to go. I think that's, that's there. But when you say Jalen Johnson, Darnell Mooney, Travis Gibson will be gone, woo, um, I get what your, where your logic is, and I see you, uh, that you're looking at where the Bears, how they drafted, the players that they brought in, and what that could mean. I think you also, as your point, you have to look at what's coming plus potentially in the draft, as the Bears could have 
two. Well, they're slated to have two first round picks if they don't trade one for another player. Um, and so there's enough reason to think they're like, hey, some of these guys aren't going to be coming back because the Bears are probably going to be able to get their replacements immediately in next year's draft. And I think that's a reasonable take to have, absolutely. But I think ultimately it comes down to how you perform. If Travis, Travis Gibson comes in and gets gives seven to eight sacks next season, are you going to want to bet on a rookie to come in and step that in? And even if you do draft a rookie, are you going to still keep Travis there and then let that rookie come along slowly, right, or, or whatever else you do? Um, Darnell Mooney, I, listen, I, I think the chemistry with Justin Fields, and if he performs this year next to DJ Moore, like we've seen him do before next to other bigger wideouts, I think we keep him as well. Jalen Johnson, you guys know, I feel like Jalen Johnson is absolutely a candidate to be traded by the by the trade deadline. Um, but hey, there is absolutely a world in which all those guys go. And there are a lot of Bears fans that, are, that as well look at those players and say, because they weren't Ryan Pohl's guys, they already may have one foot out the door. So we'll see. I've always said this, that yes, Ryan Pohl's hasn't given a lot of extensions. But what looking back, what extensions could he have, got, could he have given that we end up looking at as a miss? Roquan Smith, I don't look at it as a miss. We end up giving, basically revamping our whole linebacking core, quality linebacking core, for what he wanted to get paid. Uh, David Montgomery, yes, we sent him off, but immediately drafted Roshan Johnson and brought in Dante Foreman, who's no slouch either. Still have a solid running back game. So I look at that and say, and then a lot of the one-year prove-it deals that Ryan Poles got, all those guys are still, are still free agents, haven't been signed by a team. So I think, yes, Ryan Poles is calculated in who he extends, but I think if you perform, regardless if, he, if you're his guy or not, he's going to give you a contract. But we'll see. And as far as being tired of the media, absolutely. That is why places like me, Swifty, uh, well, us here at Chicago Bears Central, Swifty, um, our, uh, Pat, the designer over at the Chicago Bears podcast with ESPN and at the Windy City Breeze, they're important, right? They are, they are hugely important because the national media is a bunch of national bum. And when you want to get the real coverage for real teams, for people who actually love the team in the city, they come to creators like us. But that's my time for today. Make sure you guys follow the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. Uh, lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related and like liked in every episode up. Shy Town up, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media. Media.